Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 14.1 to the public. This is available to all iOS 14 supported devices, so if you were able to get iOS 14, you'll be able to get this version. Now this particular version is the same as iOS 14.1 GM, so if you're already on GM, you have the final version. They have the same build number we'll take a look at in a little bit. Now this particular update came in at 355 megabytes on my iPhone 8 Plus, and it's about the same size depending on your device, up to about 500 megabytes if you're on the previous iOS 14.0.1. Now, this update also will not be available if you're on iOS 14.2 betas because you would actually need a computer to downgrade to this version in order to get it. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So to go see what the build number is, we go to settings, then we go to general, then about. At the top, we tap on software version, and you'll see the build number is the same as the GM. If you've been following along, it's 18A8395. Now, along with iOS 14.1, Apple also released iPad. Pad OS 14.1, and then the one we've been waiting for for a long time, HomePod OS 14.1. That brings support to the existing HomePod as well as HomePod Mini once that's released, and brings all of those new Siri and intercom features as well as improvements and fixes. So that should be available for your HomePod right away, and if you're not seeing it, it will update by itself, or you can go into your Home app, go to your HomePod, and update it there. And it may take a while to update, but once you have it, you'll be able to use those features. And with iOS 14.1, it also includes those features. So if you have 14.1 and you have a HomePod updated or a HomePod mini once it comes out, you'll be able to use the intercom feature. So you'll go into the Home app, and if you have that, it'll say Welcome to Home like this. This was sent in by a viewer, and you'll see it says Intercom. You can now reach everyone in your home. Even when they're away, just say Hey, and then the Siri name, as well as intercom followed by your message. Your message can be sent to HomePods and personal devices. So that includes iPhones and iPads. And this was sent in by Ali, so I appreciate that. But you get the idea. You can use your phone as a HomePod intercom. So you can use it between devices. It's a really nice feature. Now, this update also adds support for 10-bit HDR video playback and editing in your Photos app if you have an iPhone 8 and later. So, unfortunately, on the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus, 7, 7 Plus, and SE, you won't be able to view or edit those HDR videos, but that's because the display is an HDR, I assume. And so, they've got that sort of unfortunate lack of feature. So with iPhone 8 Plus, you'll be able to edit and view those features. And that really coincides with iPhone 12, where it can now record in HDR. So I think that's what that's all about. So you'll be able to send or view those videos in your newer devices, even if you don't have a 12. Now, if you were having connectivity issues, the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max seemed to get a modem update, but not all devices did. For example, the iPhone 8 Plus did not get a modem update. So it just depends which device you're on. If you're coming from iOS 14.0, point one, you may or may not have it depending on which device you have. Usually the problematic devices are the ones with face ID. So hopefully it fixes an issue if you have that modem update. And now there's a bunch of fixes in this particular update. And that's usually what 14.1 is all about. And so let's go over those one by one. And the first one is it addresses an issue where some widgets, folders, and icons were showing up in reduced sizes on your home screen. Now I found that to be more true on the iPad. I had a lot of people message message me and say the icons were just showing up as smaller sizes. It seems to be fixed on both devices and this update fixes that. The next one, it fixes an issue where some emails in mail were sent from an incorrect alias. So if you used email aliases in the mail client and it wasn't sending properly, that should be fixed. It also fixed an issue that could prevent incoming calls from displaying region information. So maybe you received a call. It was from maybe the United States in a certain state, it may not show it the correct way. Now it should. And then it also addresses an issue where some users were occasionally unable to download or add songs to their library while viewing an album or playlist. And so if you were in music and you couldn't see your songs being downloaded, it should be fixed now as well. I didn't have that issue, but quite a few did. Now this one could be a big one if you use a zoomed in display. They fixed an issue where when you're on your lock screen and you go to enter a passcode, so maybe you're not using Face ID or Touch ID, sometimes if it was 
zoomed in, you would actually have an overlap of the buttons over the top of the emergency call button. So you couldn't input text or tap on those. And so that should be resolved. So if we go to the home screen, we swipe up a couple times because I don't have it pointed at my face, you get to this, you wouldn't be able to go to the emergency, which is a big problem. So that's fixed in this update. Now, if you use the calculator app and we're having bugs, they've fixed an issue with that. So within the calculator, apparently there were issues where it could prevent zeros from appearing in the calculator. So if you need a bunch of zeros, well, they just wouldn't show up sometimes. So that should be fixed. It also resolves an issue where streaming video resolution could temporarily be re reduced at the start of playback. So instead of playing at say full, 1080p or 4k resolution, whatever you're watching in your TV with video, the, re the resolution at the beginning could be reduced. Now we've seen this for years in things like YouTube, where it will eventually just bump it up to your requested resolution, but that shouldn't happen on Apple's different playback services. So that should be fixed now. Now, if you use an Apple watch, there was an issue for some people where you couldn't add a new watch as a family watch. So if you go into your watch app and then you want to add a watch, you could have issues if you were trying to set it up for a family member that should now be resolved and it should work properly. So some people were having that. I know when they got their new Apple watches, they weren't able to set it up properly. So that should be resolved. Now they've also fixed an issue where the display material of the Apple watch could have shown up incorrectly that's now been resolved. So maybe you have a titanium watch and it was showing aluminum that should be resolved now. And it's just a small detail. And that's something we usually appreciate about Apple. And then also they fixed an issue where the files app could cause some MDM managed cloud service providers to incorrectly display content as unavailable. So what that means is if you have a device that's managed, maybe it's by a school, you have an iPad, sometimes cloud service providers would incorrectly display content as unavailable when you were trying to serve content that should be resolved. And then the last one I think is interesting. A lot of people that were having problems with Wi-Fi, apparently Apple's fixed or improved compatibility with you ubiquity wireless access points. Now that means ubiquity owns quite a few different ones, such as the amplify alien that I'm using at home with Wi-Fi six. And if you have one of those and you're having issues with Wi-Fi, it should be resolved. Now there's also some security updates, but they don't list anything really specifically. So they didn't publish any CVE entries, but apparently there's some updates available for it for iPhone six S and later iPod touch seventh generation, iPad air two and later and iPad mini four and later. So there are some security updates in here. We just don't know exactly what they are. So we'll have to wait and see if Apple ever publishes those, but right now they haven't said what exactly they've fixed as far as that. And so that is everything they've said that they've fixed. That doesn't mean there aren't other improvements such as battery life. They don't call it out specifically, but I know a lot of people were having issues with battery life and I've been running iOS 14.1 or iPad OS 14.1 on my iPad pro for quite some time. And it seems to be okay. So if we go into my settings, we'll go to battery, wait for it to load here. We'll go to the last 10 days and you'll see that I don't charge it every day. It was last charged to 57% 28 minutes ago. And that's because I had to install the update. And when you're below 50% battery life, you need to have 50% to install it. But in general, I don't charge it every day. And I usually get about eight hours to 10 hours of use out of it with streaming video and, and doing other things such as Safari. You'll see 83% of my usage was using YouTube. And so battery life really has not been an issue with 14.1 for me, at least on iPad. Now on the iPhone, it will take a little bit of time to know. So we'll have to see after a few days what it's like. And of course I'll mention that in a follow-up, but there's no way to know initially. You can't really measure it by going from 100% down and seeing how fast it drops since Apple actually measures that different. It's not exactly how they measure it. So we'll have to wait and see. Now this update will not drop your battery health. Battery health is not dropped by updates, but rather is just a remeasurement of the physical battery in here and its capacity and what it's capable of. So don't worry about installing it as far as that goes. You'll see the battery health on my iPhone 11 pro is hundred percent. This isn't my main phone, but depending on your device after a year, it's going to vary. So for example, on my iPhone 11 pro max, Let's go to battery here. We'll go down to where we passed it here. We'll go to battery. Then we'll go to battery health. It's at 93% as my daily phone charged every single night, all night after over a year, I had it from day one and it's doing well. 80% after two years is normal. According to Apple. Now, as far as performance on all of these, 
performance seems to be pretty good. Performance on my iPad that I've been using for some time seems to be fine, super smooth, no issues whatsoever. In fact, on the oldest phone here, the 6S Plus, it seems to be okay. And you'll see if we go into music, it's the first time I've opened music on this device since installing the update. It seems nice and smooth, fluid, fast, and I really wouldn't worry about any issues. Everything seems to be nice and fast, and hopefully they fixed issues if people were having them. But everything from loading games to anything else should be fine. So if we go into Minecraft on this device, I'll wait for it to load. You'll see the world is loaded, and I normally use this to gauge frame rate and see if it's smooth. So walking around this world seems to be nice and smooth. If I go fast here, I don't see any tearing or anything like that. It seems like it's performing fast. Usually this runs, I believe, at 60 frames per second. So it's, it's fairly smooth just walking around. And if you're playing games, I wouldn't expect any slowdowns, although it will get a little bit warm when playing a game. I noticed that already while playing it on the 6S Plus, but it's going to vary depending on device and how much of the CPU you're using. On any of these devices, the 8 Plus or the 11 Pro Max, I really wouldn't worry about it. Now with iPadOS 14.1, don't expect anything other than what I've already mentioned for iOS 14.1. Nothing's really new. Hopefully they've fixed the widgets though, but there isn't anything specific that they've mentioned. In fact, there's less notes of things they've added than more notes. So just depending on your device, it should have all the same sort of features, that HDR support. But the HDR support is only from the iPad mini fifth generation, iPad Air third generation, and then the iPad Pro 10.5, 11, 12.9. So all of those are supported as well as probably the new iPad Air fourth generation, of course, once that comes out this Friday. Now, as far as benchmarks, I used Geekbench 5. Let's take a look at them. You'll see on the 11 Pro, I scored 1,331 for single core, 3,460 for multi-core. This is pretty good. I could run it again and I'll probably get higher higher numbers. But in general, if we go back to, well, November of last year, we're running at about the same from iOS 13 to iOS 14.1. So we don't see any slowdown, so everything should be good there. Let's take a look at all of these devices. So from left to right, I have the 2020 12.9 inch iPad Pro, then the iPhone 6S Plus, then the iPhone 8 Plus, and then the iPhone 11 Pro. So this should give you a general idea from the oldest devices to the newest devices and everywhere in between of hopefully what to expect from your device. Now, should you update to iOS 14.1? Well, at this point, I would say absolutely. This particular update usually fixes quite a lot once we get to the 0.1 version of the update. Last year with 13.1, the year before that, 12.1, usually Apple's fixed most of the major issues. It's super smooth on the iPhones as well as the iPad that I've been using for a few days with the GM on it. So I really wouldn't hesitate. I'd just update and hopefully it fixes the battery issues. But again, that will take a few days to know for sure. So that's it for iOS 14.1. It's not a huge update, but there are some nice things in it. Hopefully it fixes most of your problems. And of course I'll have a follow-up on the weekend like I normally do. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.